Okay, so we are ready to go. <laughs> Can you hear me, Tamara? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So do you want to start? You want to? Up to you. Whatever you want to do. You can go ahead and start. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everybody's doing okay and stay safe. I'm Tamara. I'm a psychotherapist and I have my private practice in Aventura. And um, one of the things I specialize in is anxiety and stress and dealing with trauma. And also having gone through cancer myself, it kind of, uh, you know, it, it led to that avenue too, where I started dealing, working with people that have gone through that stress in their lives as well. So um, I love that Tracy invited me to be here. Um, right now, everybody's going through um, a certain level of anxiety of some sort, depending on how your life is going and um, what your situation is. So I'd love to be here and just support in any way I can just to help you kind of navigate this moment right now that we're all going through. Perfect. Well, again, we're super grateful for you coming on and appreciate your time and your support. Well, yeah, thank you. So um, one of the things that I've been, because I'm still doing online sessions. So uh, one of the things that I hear constantly and I have noticed even in myself is with all this, since it started, it's uh, feeling a little bit disoriented, you know, maybe a little bit more irritable. Um, overall, you know, this is a stimulus. There's a lot of t tension happening, even if you're doing okay at home, even if you're feeling calm and grateful, there is a level of tension. If you just turn on the TV, you're constantly reminded. So I think the most important thing right now is just focusing on the present moment and managing your mental health because this is gonna pass eventually, but it creates a lot of changes. And one of the things that Tracy mentioned is that there, um, there are people going through tr treatment right now, or they just have gone through treatment. That in itself is a huge life change and very stressful. And just emotionally, it triggers you, it escalates you. So then imagine now having this global situation happen on top of that, that can be very overwhelming as well. So whether you're going through treatment or you have gone, one of the things that um, I have heard from people that have shared their experiences with me is that it is traumatic to go through treatment and sometimes any type of anxiety, especially this one, can almost trigger that trauma back. So it's important to check in with yourself and see how you're doing because you know uh, if you have gone through treatment or cancer or any other traumatic situation in your life, what's happening right now can definitely um, make certain feelings resurface. I also have heard from a lot of women and men too, that because they have gone through trauma in the, in the past, they're actually handling this a little bit better. It's almost like, you know, I handle that. So now I feel like I can handle this. So people have different perceptions of what's happening right now. So it's great to check in with yourself, see how you're feeling to then be able to get grounded and just keep going one day at a time. You know, maybe you can share with, um, I know we have a couple women on the call now that are either just healing from surgery or still going through treatment, you know, I don't know if maybe you can share some coping mechanisms like with them to obviously help them heal. Or I know that obviously going outside and all those things, but from your perspective, maybe there's a different avenue that can guide them a little better. Yeah. So when I was going through my treatment um, and I didn't have breast cancer, I had bone cancer. And it's interesting because it quarantined my life. You know, I, I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. And I lived in the hospital for a while. And in that moment, you know, I remember talking to a neighbor in the hospital and she was very sad, very sad that it had quarantined her life and that she was going through all that. And in that moment, I realized something. I realized that I could um, be present and accept that that's what's happening to me so I can embrace and, and care for myself with a lot of love, or I could, because it does hurt emotionally, you know, that your life has been thrown off, I could, um, or I could resist. And if I resist, what happens is it leads to frustration. It generates more sadness. It triggers you. So I think one of the most important things right now especially if you're going through treatment, there's a lot to handle. Not only the stimulus and the tension, the stress from treatment, 
but also from what's happening right now. I think your perception is one of your most important vital tools. Um, you know, we can cope in many ways. Take care of yourself, um, go for a walk, you know, have a moment of, of whatever feeds your soul. But I suggest to getting very, very receptive to aligning your mind, seeing what you're thinking about, um, shifting it. Perception is huge in even healing. Because if you're resisting, you're at a state of um, what I like to call activation, meaning you're just activated, you are startled, your alarm system within your body has been activated and triggered. When you're at that state, um, it's almost like you're, re you're reacting to everything. What we want to do is respond. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So mindset. I remember, so I'll share something. Um, something personal to my life that made a huge difference. And although it was just about my treatment, I think about that day every single day of my life and it still applies to everything, whether it's relationship, professionally, the scenario is different, but the, but the power of the moment, you know, can still be used every time. I remember when I was in the hospital and I had started chemotherapy and I had to be impatient because the, I was doing chemotherapy at 100% level every day. Um, so my doctor said I had to sign a paper saying that I was willing to do that and all the risks and all that, and I went for it. And I remember there was a time when I was feeling very, very, very ill. And you know, you can hate chemotherapy, you know, not enjoy the process, obviously, that you're going through. It's, it's horrific if you've gone through it. But I remember looking at my pole, you know, because I had the pole with the, with the port. And I remember looking at it and saying, you know what? You're going to be uh, my warrior. You're going to be one of the, the chances I have. You're going to be the vehicle I have towards uh, making it. So from now on, I will love the hell out of chemotherapy. I'm going to love you so much. So every day I would look at it and say, I love you. I love me. I'm hanging on. We're doing this together. So I started every time I would get sick. I started feeling um, a little bit motivated to hang on because it was part of the process. So that was during my treatment, but now when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel hopeless, frustrated, stuck, I remember that moment of embracing the moment so you can be fully present instead of resisting the moment where you become overwhelmed, frustrated, and blocked, where you can't see what to do next. And I think right now with what's happening, with all of the uncertainty, uh, with all of the uh, unsettling situation that we're going through, it's very easy to, um, because of the unknown situation that we're all gonna find in some way, it's very easy to feel in the moment, overwhelmed, consumed, fearful. And then when that happens, it can, it can physiologically trigger what I like to call the anxiety spiral. If we stay in that moment of questions and what ifs, it triggers in the brain that, and we don't want to go down that spiral because it blocks you. So I think it's being able to stop for a moment, scan, catch and see where are my thoughts at? Am I aligning with myself? Am I accepting? Am I moving through? Or am I resisting and getting stuck? So it's about that acceptance and making that commitment with yourself so you can come back to alignment and face what whatever comes your way. You know, one question that I've heard is, you know, through being quarantined and being home, you know, for the, for the ones who can't leave the house, especially that are, you know, going through treatment, a lot of past traumas are coming up. And I know that's something that you specialize in a little bit. Um, is there any suggestions that you have that you can pass on to everybody on the call and who's ever going to listen to the recording, you know, obviously trauma comes up and we all need to work through it, but is there any suggestions that you have for us on, you know, past traumas or surgeries or people with cancer in your family or your close, close friends is, you know, I deal with so many women and I speak to so many different women and hear so many different stories. But one constant question is, you know, through the quarantine of where, I used to be able to go to treatment with somebody or I used to have my family come deliver me food, you know, well, these are all the past traumas start coming up in their heads at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
So the mind is like a filing cabinet, you know, and there's all these files there that represent things we've gone through. So let's say right now you're noticing that you're, you're having, uh, some people feel like they're regressing, like, oh my gosh, all the progress I've, I've made all these years and now I'm back. It's normal. It's normal because of the level of anxiety, things from the past, almost like those little files pop up in the filing cabinet. So, um, it's, it's important to understand that that's normal and that happens. Obviously, if you can, seek counseling, seek professional support. If you can't, there are resources out there like support groups. I have a group that I do online where we get connected. Um, reaching out to family, loved ones, being able to share that feeling. But reach out to somebody that can receive you, you know, somebody that can be um, a, a support to even listen to you, to help you get grounded. Because right now, if we're isolated at home and those files are popping up, it's really important to get connected and have that emotional connection. So you feel heard, loved, supported. Um, I've had, like I said, some people uh, were experiencing anxiety before this. They had, we all, many things have happened in our lives. We have all of us here and in the world have a lot of files in our filing cabinet. Different files, different stories, right? So when this happened, oftentimes when it happens, something this, um, anything that catches your attention in the moment might make you not look at the past so much and be startled and held by the moment. But then as we're already in this and we've been in social isolation for a while, then it starts kind of coming back and catching your attention again. It's important to be present and work on that as much as you can with compassion and kindness and patience and acceptance because it, does just, it doesn't just go away. The files stay there. So you have to work through the files. The files don't just, uh, they, don't, they don't haunt you forever if you work through them. So what I would say is right now, if you're having anything come up, identify even if it's one person, a friend, anybody that is willing to be there and present with you even if it's over the phone or a Zoom call, um, you know, anybody who's willing to be present. So it's that emotional connection. If you're not able to work on the trauma and overcome right now, because a lot of times, you know, things are a little bit limited right now, um, at least you're being present, um, you're paying attention, you're looking at it lovingly and not with fear that it's coming up. So it's almost like looking at yourself and saying, I see you, I see the pain there, you know, I'm with you and being able to stay grounded so you don't just feel that you need to run from that, just being with it, you know, and then one day at a time taking care of it. Perfect. Maybe what I'll do tomorrow is I will unmute everybody, see, I know a couple more people have joined and see if anybody has questions and then if you have anything else to say, we can pass the mic back over to you. Perfect. Hi, Miriam. Hi. Hi. I think there's still people muted. Um, okay. I wonder who it is. Dominic. It's not Bucky. Uh, hi, Becky. <laughs> so Becky's actually wow. Hey. Hey Mary. How are you? Good. Hey, Dominic. Look at Just the screen. Just send you the link. So you have uh, it. Hey Joanne, thank you for coming on, everybody. And <laughs> Becky Miriam and Joanne. Does somebody have a radio in the background? Hang on. Un Mute. You can mute me. That's All right, let me mute, mute Nikki. Hold on. Um, is that better? Yeah. Everybody can hear better. So, Joanne, thank you for coming on. Joanne, somebody that I've worked with for many years as well. Joanne, when they do Spring Bling Think Pink. Um, this year, Spring Bling Pink Think has been postponed due to quarantine. Joanne's actually a breast cancer survivor as well. Um, as we see, Becky's on. Becky's our city commissioner, the survivor in Coconut Creek. She's extremely supportive. Thank you for coming on. And Miriam, thank you for coming on. I have always, always supporting you. 
Um, Miriam, somebody that I also met through the Grassy Water Sisterhood. She does meditations and offers a lot of services. Um, I'm going to post a yoga meditation that she's having tonight that I can share with everybody. That's a free resource so you guys can check that out after on Braca Strong. But I want to go back and for those of you that were on or if you guys have questions, you know, we're dealing with different avenues and coping with COVID-19. And Tamara's okay. giving us some awesome tips on, you know, how to deal with things in a better manner than, you know, sitting home in isolation. You know, I know that at Brock is Strong, we're here to support you and anything we can do. You know, my phone line's open 24 hours a day for anybody um, that needs support. <clears throat> and at this time, does anybody have any questions? <coughs> hey, Tracy. <laughs> hey, Joanne. How's, are you in Jersey? Yeah, I'm in Jersey. Being cold and wet and raining. Uh, I know you're ready to come back home to the beautiful sunshine state. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions for Tamara or any avenues that they're looking for that's different? Um, I'm sure we're open for a Q and A. You know, I just got on, so I only heard a little bit of what um, whatever her name was. I'm sorry, but. I actually have been going through uh, trying to learn Zoom and, and trying to help run the city and everything. And it got to the point that I wasn't even, my dog hated me. Uh, <laughs> and and I, her best I actually friend. decided that I needed to play some nice music sometimes at night before I went to bed to slow me down. And uh, <sighs> instead of working all the time, taking some time and floating on the raft in the pool or or I learned that I I do uh I have Hoda Cobbs um I really needed that and I try to look at a verse a day because I have to turn myself around um and I that's just a few little things that I have done but it gets tough sometimes um and I've reached out to many people there was a video that I did through my treatment just because I wanted to help breast cancer patients and I don't know whether I had the BRCA gene or not because they didn't even test it when I had breast cancer but I had uh, they thought I had ovarian cancer and I got lucky with that but, um, I think it's great to have this organization and to help people because yeah sometimes you can't talk to certain people but someday the right person comes along and and it makes your day and and it changes your views on things and that's what I like about this group. Thank you. Rebecca, thank you for sharing that because you mentioned something really powerful, which was um, you simplified your day. There's so many things for us to take on and adapt to Zoom and this and that and work if you're still working from home. And I think it can really, it can be very overwhelming on top of everything that's happening already. So being able to underachieve <laughs> allowing yourself to underachieve, um, allowing yourself to simplify, and if all, if you if you need to stop and play some music, say, take a nice hot shower, whatever it is, and lower our expectations. I think especially now, there's so many people saying, "Gotta keep going, gotta keep going, gotta keep the machine moving." But the thing is that we're not a machine. And we need to be able to stop and even lower our expectations of what the day will hold. If the house is dirty, if you happen to have kids at home, you know, it's a lot of a stimulus. It's a lot of tension just even at home, keeping all the pieces, you know, from falling. So sometimes just taking that step back. I think it's not just sometimes it's necessary uh, every day to allow ourselves to, um, if you need to, underachieve to have lower expectations and simplify and add a little, add moments of pleasure throughout the day that make you feel good. I'm in mute. Oh, there we go. I was mute. So I relate to, to, to everybody in here. Um, Tam said, yes, you underachieved something. But three days, three nights ago, I've been by myself for a week. My sister was with me for two weeks, um, helping me through my surgery. It was hard, and but she just babied me and didn't let me do anything, so I was blessed she was here. So I've been home by myself for over a week, but about... I think she's muted. Yes. Okay. 
um, three nights ago, I broke down in tears. And this happened and uh, when I was in chemo about four times. And I was in chemo for four months because I live by myself, of course. And my daughter doesn't live in here. She lives in um, Indianapolis. So I'm by myself. I'm looking at pictures. I'm going through pictures. And three nights ago, I just started bowling. I was like, I can't do anything. I was just, I feel helpless. I can't move my arms so much. Right now I'm better. I'm moving around and I stood up and I, I mean, I'm, I'm Christian, I'm Catholic. I started praying and I held myself and I said, you know what? I have to stop because it's not going to get me anywhere. And I was going to, uh, I was going to call Tracy. I didn't want to bother her. And uh, I decided to call my cousin. And my cousin was like, you got to let it out. You got to let it out no matter what. Um, I spoke with my oncologist yesterday and she was like, the reason why you're like that is so much estrogen and you have to let it out no matter what. So it's just, it just I, get shake. I shake. Like right now I'm telling you and I'm shaking because it takes me to that moment. And I'm like, holy crap, no. So... I'm very strong and I know oh, Tracy you know me from from this area. So I'm like on the move all the time and I'm like doing stuff and I'm being sitting in my house by myself. And it drives me insane. So I have another way to let it out. I draw. I like to draw. So it's I don't know if I can see it. If I can turn it. This is I did this drawing of my mom when I was 14 years old. She died when I was 13. And that's my mom. That's a very old, old picture of her when she was 15. That's fabulous. Wow, and like this is, yeah, this is a photo. Wow. So I did that when I was 14 years old. So that's my passion. That's what I do. So oh, it's awesome. keeps me anytime. Keeps me better. Yeah. <laughs> you call me, by the way. Thank you, Tracy. Anytime. I love you. Any time of day, night, my phone was ringing this morning at 2.30. I had somebody calling me. Any time of night, feel free to shoot me a text. I know that a lot of women can relate, not only Tamara, but I know Becky's a survivor and Joanne is a survivor. Um, I'm also an artist, so I can feel what you're doing. The art is great therapy, very good therapy. So I've been painting a lot more now since I'm home. It is. You mentioned something really powerful. Um, you, you said that you've been breaking down and you counted the times yeah. you broke down. So yep. Because you did that, already tells me you resisted. Maybe you perceive that as something you can't do because you cannot be weak. If you're perceiving this as weak, we're going to have moments where we're going to uh, be vulnerable. You know? And it's not breaking down just experiencing oh can you hear me yes go ahead sorry uh, i think okay so what i was saying is we need to redefine what breaking down means you're not breaking down you're experiencing you're feeling you know, and that is a normal part. It's not just estrogen, you know, it is a normal part of experiencing challenges and feeling them. And, you know, you were mentioning about your mom, you were mentioning about not wanting to bother Tracy. That already tells me that you are a strong person and you're trying to keep it together. But even the, the, the strongest of all um, can't do it alone. That's not how we're built. We're a species of, we're, group, we're pack animals. <laughs> we're a group, we're social. We're, we need connection and love and bond, bonding. So it's important to allow yourself to have those moments of vulnerability without looking down on it. And I'm not saying you were looking down. I'm just saying that we tend to. We tend to avoid because we connect that with, with pain. We need to feel, you know? And one of the things that worked for me, I even, I wrote a lot because you draw I write and uh, so we each have to connect with something that, that allows our soul to, to speak through that and I, I wrote journals and on my journal in the moments I broke down I wrote and it's interesting because I started writing as if I were talking to myself and even recently I was reading it and it said I got you I'm now taking care of my girl 
And it was that moment that maybe I felt alone. Maybe you were feeling alone. Allow yourself to even hug yourself in that moment and say, we got this. We can do this. Feel. It's okay. Cry. I'm here. We're going to be okay. Be present with yourself. And then allow others to be present for you too. Let's unmute. I'm going to unmute everybody. That is, that is true. One of the things that I am, um, I'm always been very, um, I like to, I love people. I'm a people person. I've been doing this for 30 years. And uh, if, I don't know if you, um, if you go to my GoFundMe page, it tells you how I am. I basically, it's like, I think about other people, other people. Who, who's, I'm sorry, who's speaking? Paola. Who's speaking? Paola. Paola. Oh, okay. Paola. Paola. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Paola. So, Paola. So to me, by being in, in, not being around the people that I love, I love my customers. I love Tracy. I'm like, I'm, I get sad, but I'm like, I'm looking to the end of the tunnel. <laughs> With the light at the end of the tunnel, this is going to be over. I'm going to be back to normal. We're all going to be back to normal and go back to Okay, this is me. This is what I want to embrace. I want to embrace all my, my, my family, my, my friends, everybody. I mean, in, in this situation, what I went through um, since August, um, I, had, I was in a relationship for seven years. Uh, I didn't live with my boyfriend, but it, it got to the point that I didn't feel supported, so I broke. The, I mean, I broke. I broke up with him in January. So basically my family has, they have been my, my rock, my sister, because her and I were being to, we're being since um, forever. She's 50 years old, I'm 47. We both got diagnosed at the same age with cancer. She went through that without having a chemo. I had the chemo, now the surgery, happily recovering fast, which is, I'm like, yeah, I'll just need radiation, but I'm, doing great thank god and thank you for all the support that's one thing that i love all my friends and family good. Good. good thank you thank you for sharing and i do and i do have a journal also oh, <laughs> yes. i love those it really helps me we're, we're a lot stronger than we realize um, and i think at times the times where we challenge that's when we get the opportunity of practicing and believing and trusting in that strength you know? and you know it's funny how we may not believe we can do something but we can so in a way we just have to lean into it I'll tell you that um recently i've had conversations with kate and kate probably reads 20 books a week so i found that when I joined a book club that Kate had sent me, it was very relaxing. I mean, even if I got a stupid love story that I read a million times years ago that made me feel better, it definitely <laughs> relieved stress. That's great. I and that's all I do. <laughs> so you could reach out to Kate for that. And also, Kate has a group if you love cooking that you could also get your anxiety out and stress. I don't even cook, but I follow these groups. <laughs> Kate doesn't cook, guys. I don't cook either. Kate does not cook by any means. <laughs> she knew I did. But she she's sending me food pictures. I'm getting nervous. She started cooking. She's getting yeah, that's my boyfriend. That ain't me. <laughs> um, you know, one thing that I do when I say is, you know, at any time that anybody needs any support, we're always here for you. Um, Cindy is an ambassador for us. Kate is a board member. Um, Toby's a board member. That's my mom. Um, you know, Kate is, hey, Ron. Ron, do you want to give the ladies a piece of a hello or something? Hello, ladies. I'm so glad you're here today. Hi, Ron. Keep, <laughs> you guys keep it up. Keep doing good work. Miss you. We look forward to seeing you soon. Yes. Thank you for your support, Ron. We You're all love welcome. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at any time for anybody, I do want you to know that I'm always here. Everybody has my cell phone. 
If I don't answer a message on social media, Kate is on the other side of social media, always behind me, always checking emails, checking messages. Um, I know that I can survivors, but there's always different ways to relate through different journeys of chemo or of radiation. And I know that a couple survivors are on the call that if you guys have any questions or need support, I'd be happy to connect you guys. I know Joanne um, speaks to several different women, Cindy, um, you know, I know Nicole has shared her provider journey at mine. Um, but you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to relate to a provider where you want to hear the truth about radiation or about chemo or about your treatment. You know, yes, I can relate to you guys in a mastectomy, but I was fortunate enough and was able to take preventative action, but still always want to support survivors that are not BRCA positive, that are just breast cancer or ovarian cancer survivors, but we can always connect you with another survivor. And that's one of the programs that we do offer advocacy to make sure that, you know, you have your support. And if I can help you, somebody else can. Um, one other thing I'd like to say is Cindy also has a book I'm part of. I'm in the forward. It's called Experts in Pink. If you guys need a copy, don't have a copy, we'd like to share one with you, or you can go on Amazon and download the Kindle version. You owe me one. <laughs> I owe you one. So, Viola came because we funded her a brobe and some other information, some other stuff for her surgery that she just had. And I had the book on the table and I forgot to give it to her because uh, my poodle uh, just, Gabby ran uh, outside to see Paola as my daughter knows her from Do3RX and was very touched by her whole situation. So right before quarantine, Gabby had to run outside and make sure she'd give her her gift. <laughs> uh, I know, but we gotta meet before, uh, when, after Wednesday, I have a follow up with my uh, plastic surgeon that he told me not to wear any bra for now, so. Perfect, and once you're ready, you let us know and we'll make it work. Thanks, honey. Love oh, you. I, I even got those bras from that brilliant consort thing we can give her, Tracy. Perfect, perfect. Wrap right on the mail. So, Joanne, I don't know if you have anything to say. I know your story is super inspiring. If you want to give, if you don't mind sharing like a little piece of your story, because I know it touched my heart and close to home and our friendship over the last couple of years. Okay, so I'll just share a little brief uh, part of my journey just because um, I probably have to leave in a couple of minutes because we have to take my. 98-year-old mother, her lunch, and she makes her lunch, so. Send her, <laughs> Send her home, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, I am actually a two-time cancer survivor. My first cancer was when I was 21 years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is um, cancer of the lymph nodes and the bloodstream. And at that time, uh, they only gave me six months to live. So um, I think God had another plan for me. So that's why I'm still here. Yep. But uh, uh, when I was 45, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage 2B breast cancer. And um, I had full time, you know, chemo, radiation, everything. But um, I just looked at it as a, a, a lesson. Sometimes sometime your lessons are your blessings. And... Uh, it helps you become a better person. And uh, it's just a matter of, you know, getting through it. What I learned from my entire journey is, is that God has another plan for me. He knows my strength. He knows what I can get through. And I believe that um, uh, each, each ordeal that you go through in life just makes you a stronger person. So don't look at it as anything negative. Turn it around into something positive. And uh, we're all now superheroes. You have to think about it like that. You, know, you look on TV and look at the superheroes. No, we are superheroes. You know, if you survive the things that each one of us has been through, it makes us a superhero. So the, the, just in closing, I just want to say, you know, take this time and don't look at it as a recession or a depression. Look at it as a time to invest in yourself. That's the most thing, important thing that you could do right now is invest in yourself. So you got to read, you got to paint, you got to be creative and do things for you. You eat right. You, you know, just do things for you. Be selfish right now. It's all about you. 
so that you can heal and be a better person. Love it. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you so much, Joanne. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> yes, and invite me back. I'd be happy to you know, come. I love to hear people's stories and I love to share. So um, you're just going to go and um, give my mother-in-law her lunch. So. Go deliver. Go see that high. Send my love. I will. We'll see I will. you next May <laughs> at Spring Blank. And you know what? I may even be doing a, believe it or not, a almost like a virtual spring bling we're coming up with an idea just to have a little something this year and um next year it's going to be may 8th did i tell you that okay we're doing it mother's day weekend next year oh yeah i saw it online okay, okay. so um but i'll keep you posted and you ladies stay well stay healthy and be blessed perfect thanks joanne thank you joanne so, I know I gotta figure out how to leave the meeting. You want me to kick you out? Yeah, kick me out. <laughs> Remove <Bye>. die. <laughs> um, so I know that Tamara donated her time. So I wanted to see if anybody else has any other questions or pass the mic back over to her, just as I'm sure she's swamped with patients. Because I sure know that a lot of people need therapy these days. I might be. Okay, I have to. I have to go. Thank you for having. Bye. Bye, Cindy. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, so I think right now it's everything that everybody has said is all of it, you know? So focus on yourself, your, your mental health, your physical health, but without that demand. If you cannot leave this quarantine having learned French, that's okay. Don't learn French. If you have not read 10 books, that's okay. <laughs> I think it's that compassion piece. What is it that I need that resonates with me? Um, and that's okay. You know, because if you, I, I, I love social media for the, the factor of, you know, how it connects people. Um, but at the same time, you end up comparing at times. Be careful with that, you know, because everybody's showing how many, how, how many times a day they work out. And you're like eating chips thinking, Okay, okay. Great. <laughs> right. okay. I think it's just being honest with yourself um, and compassionate. And then one day at a time, get... whatever this is, I'm not just talking about COVID 19, I'm talking about life. <laughs> uh, We're going to thrive through this. <laughs> so, does anybody have any other questions or anything to say? <laughs> one thing. I have my, it's not a question, it's just my daughter is going to school on the uh, University of Indianapolis for psychology. Oh, so yeah. she started her second year, so we talk a lot. And she tries to like dig into my brain and I was like, okay, tell me, what can I do? What have you learned the last year, my dear? Very <laughs> so nice. That's, a good thing. that's awesome. Very nice. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for coming on. Paola, anytime you need anything, you call me. Becky, I'm so glad you got to come on. I miss seeing you at the city hall and stuff, you know? Well, you know, it's tough because I actually just got off a Zoom call and I said, oh, I better check my email and I'm going, oh, great. So, <laughs> I, you know, I would love to sit and t listen to this anytime. And, you know, every, no matter how strong we are, we all need help. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter whether you just find out as a year down the road, five years down the road. And I think it's good to talk about it. Thank you. Mom, you have any questions?